you have to be brave, right? To say, let's go to counseling. You know, let's really try to work on this relationship because we don't want surprises in the marriage because we can plan the day and it's just for one day. But then after that one day, you have to live together. You have to understand each other more. And then the fun is like, well, we had fun on the honeymoon, but now the wedding, we don't know how to act, interact with each other. Our little things come up that they don't know how to work with each other. I like to say they're different characteristics that they have is um, they're very controlling. Um, sometimes bridezilla's <clears throat> very controlling because one, they think that they know. And a lot of times they don't know, but instead of them just saying, I don't know, they want to control everything. And then you have those that are kind of mellow with it. You can tell behind the scenes that they're stressing out, but um, face to face, you could tell like you're overly stressed. And a lot of times we hear the word bridezilla and we just assume that it's going to be a chaos. And a lot of times it can be, but and on the other side is they're, they're stressed out. What's up, Bravehearts community? This is Sean Heineman, your premier pre-engagement coach, back with another segment of It's Scary to Remarry, wanting you to love fearlessly. I have a special guest in the building with me today. I don't know why I always say in the building like they're actually sitting next to me, but I just like <laughs> one day I'll be able to bring in my guest. But anyway, <laughs> today's guest is a mother. She's an author, and we're going to talk about her book as well. And she's the CEO of Amorous Weddings and Events. Bravehearts community, let's show some love to Stephanie White. How are you doing this evening? I am good. I'm well. Thank you. And you? I'm good. This is uh, episode number two for tonight, so I'm, I'm rolling. Yes, you are. <laughs> awesome. Thanks again for taking some time out of your busy schedule to make this happen. With you being an, a, a wedding and event planner, I'm like, got to have you on the show. I mean, here it is. I'm talking about marriage and divorce. So I kind of want to hit come with at a different angle. Okay. I know you get probably get a lot of questions about pricing and things of that nature, but I kind of want to take that relationship marital angle. So I wanted to ask you this question right off the top because I thought about this soon as I thought about bringing you on the show. Have you mm -hmm. ever had a bridezilla? And <laughs> what are the traits? Oh, yeah. Well, you know what? I haven't had a bridezilla before. I actually had a groomzilla. So it was the opposite. <laughs> Can you talk about that? <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> so the groomzilla, um, he's Nigerian. And so she was from South America. And, you know, bringing both families into the picture, she didn't know what she wanted. She didn't know the flowers, the cake, the colors. And he had it literally all planned out. He was like, we're going to wear, I think it was like um, Heather Gray, which is like the color of your um, your shirt. So it was like Heather Gray and pink. And I think he said like black and white or something like that. And I was like, okay, well, that's the colors. And I'm looking at her and I'm like, are you, are you okay with those colors? And she was like, whatever he wants. And I'm like, really? So it didn't dawn on me to what was really going on. Cause this was the first bride. I mean, groomzilla that I had, it didn't dawn on me. And I'm like, why is he telling me like everything he wants? He wants the, um, the flowers. He knew the cake that he wanted. He had like three, eight different cakes. Um, and he was like adamant. He's like, we got to have that. We got to have this. He was arguing with like the venue because the DJ, um, he wanted his own DJ since he was from Nigeria. So he had one here in Arizona that he wanted to bring. And I knew it was going to be an issue because, you know, in that culture, sometimes as a wedding planner, it's hard to work with like a DJ. And I was looking at him like, Osa, you're going to, you know, you're going to really mess me up by doing this. But he knew everything and it was very stressful because I would present other things to him based in their budget. And he was like, no, I want this. I'm like, okay. So sometimes the traits, I like to say they're different characteristics that they have is um, they're very controlling. Um, sometimes bridezilla's <clears throat> very controlling because one, they think that they know. And a lot of times they don't know, but instead of them just saying, I don't know, they want to control everything. And then you have those that are kind of mellow with it. You can tell behind the scenes that they're stressing out. But um, face to face, you could tell like you're overly stressed. And a lot of times 
we hear the word bridezilla and we just assume that it's going to be a chaos. And a lot of times it can be, but and on the other side is they're they're stressed out, right? It's their big day. They're trying to plan everything. They want to make sure that everybody is set, ready to go. They want to make sure that the dresses are, you know, the same or the same color. Um, and so it just depends on that particular bride. But that couple that I had right there, for sure, he was, I was like, oh my gosh, like he stressed me out. And I'm like, I'm the planner. Like, you can't stress me, but yeah, he stressed me out. By the time that wedding was over, it hit 1030. I was so excited. I said, oh, thank God it's over. But yeah, so <laughs> um, they can be spoiled too, by the way. The brides or the grooms can be very, very spoiled. They're probably spoiled in their, you know, their personal life or just spoiled in wanting to get whatever it is that they want to have. And they're quick with it. It's like, I have to have this. If I don't have this, we got an issue. Um, or I want everybody to be there at a certain time. And if you're not there at a certain time, then you're not going to be in my wedding. Like when you watch the show Bridezilla, that's exactly what it can be. <laughs> oh my God. How, how do you, how do you deal with it? Like how, what is your mindset going into each situation? Like, do you just go in with an open mind or do you kind of go in like, what is, what well, is you always have to, you always have to have an open mind and because understanding where a person is in life and how they act is my most, most important thing. So when I have the initial conversation with them, that first consultation, it literally is covering almost everything, their vision that they want for their wedding. At that time, I'm able to look at both, um, both, you know, the both couple and be able to say, okay, how is their personality? Um, is this going to be a hot mess? <laughs> <laughs> Am I going to be able to work with them? Or am I not? And so, and most importantly is I want to make sure that personality wise that we all get along together because I'm going to be working with you from the start all the way to the ending of your wedding. And so um, it can be challenging, especially when you have a strong personality and I have a strong personality as well. So sometimes it can be clashing, but again, a lot of times if I say, Hey, I understand how you feel. A lot of people just want to know, do you get what, what I'm trying to say? Do you understand how I feel? And um, are you able to help me in this crisis if I do have a crisis? So a lot of times I don't know. Sometimes I'm stepping into it. I'm like, oh, my goodness. <laughs> That's interesting because is it around maybe this time of the year where there's a lot of weddings going on? Maybe uh, September, kind of October. Yeah. yeah. Yep. We're starting wedding season, September, um, October, November, December. And it kind of slows off by that because it's a little bit chilly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then we pick it back up in the spring. But yeah, there's a lot of weddings that are being booked right now mm -hmm. for Arizona. Yeah, Arizona, right? I was living there. Yeah. Uh, me and Stephanie go back. So this, yes. is, this is a special uh, interview <laughs> for me. So this is probably more, you know, more of me than than anybody else. I'm just like, I, I, I was being selfish with this interview. Okay. Oh. <laughs> But there's, I'm pretty sure there's going to be a lot of people that this can help because, again, this is that time of the season. So I'm right. pretty sure people will enjoy this, uh, yeah. especially coming from a different angle. But what are some things that happen during the wedding planning lets you know if a couple will have a successful marriage or not? Like, what is some things that, not saying that you have to, like, say this to them, but are there any clues or anything, any kind of things that let you know, like, oh, I don't know, they're going to make it. Yeah, a lot of times it's I like to watch how they communicate with each other mm -hmm. um, because sometimes when a couple really does love each other and they're really in love with each other, you can really tell because how she responds to him and how he responds to her is completely different. It's, it's almost like they respect each other and they they respect each other as far as I trust you to help plan this wedding. And I trust you that if I'm not there, that you're going to take my feelings in consideration. And so when I see couples like that, that they can communicate well, that they love each other, um, that we can go to like the bridal shop together and they're both going back and forth and they're saying, well, I kind of like this. And he's saying, well, I kind of like this. And then she's able to compromise, you know, or he's able to compromise. Then it's like, okay, they can work together. Then you have some other alarming 
things that will happen where they don't communicate well at all. You know, it's the little things that come up and then you just like, and then I have to ask myself, well, maybe it's because this is a stressful situation. Planning a wedding can be very stressful. And so, but they're learning each other at the same time, right? So this is probably the first thing that they really are planning together versus I'm going to buy a house together. Now we have to plan like these small details with the planner. And so if they cannot communicate well, or if um, one of them is more domineering than the other, I see that a lot too. That's a lot. That's an indicator. I'm like, I'm not sure if those are going to work. Um, and then just the whole planning process, like they'll say, okay, we need to take a break. Then I'm like, okay, they're either stressed out, they're going through relationship problems, but I'd rather them say that I'm going through a break than to try to make this work and they know that it's not going to work. And I've had a couple before I was at the end of it, I was doing the process. I was like, I literally don't know how they're going to work because they fought so much. They argued so much. They did not know how to communicate. And then mom and dad and everybody else was involved too, the family. So it caused a lot of um, chaos as well because mom wants this, then his father wanted this, and then her mom wanted this. It was just a lot. And then it caused the couple to split because once the family is involved, they don't know how to come together and say, listen, this is for us, right? Versus having, yeah, we know that you're married into the family, but this is about us. And if it's not about us, then what are we doing? And so if they have that in the beginning of planning, that's when I can tell like it's going to last. But I am blessed to say that every wedding out of 15 years, they are still married. That's cool. <laughs> that's a blessing. Yes. So, yes, it so, really is. Yeah. So anybody that plan on getting married, make sure you go to Stephanie because yeah. chances yeah. are you will stay married. <laughs> <laughs> you will stay married. Yes. <laughs> that's that's beautiful because and the reason I asked that question was because I think this is a great trial and error to see mm -hmm. can we really make this work with such a, a stressful event yeah that if you can get through it you know because I'm sure there's a lot of arguing I'm pretty sure there's a lot of and then and then a lot of times men are conditioned too to believe that this is the woman's day yeah Ooh. yeah so, yeah. So you want to talk about um, that? Yes. Let's talk about I'm glad that. you mentioned that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it is. I guess that's just what um, the culture, you know, it is. It's the woman's day. And I meet a lot of couples now that they're like, no, we don't believe in that. It's our day, mm -hmm. you know, because they are coming together. They're creating something that's magical for them and they want it to work. And so really we want his opinion, right? She wants to know what he likes and vice versa. So they're coming together. So really it is both of their day. Um, I've had couples that he'll say, no, it's her day. Give her whatever she wants. And then she's happy, you know, but then I'll check in on them a year later. And then it's like, well, she just wants whatever. And I'm like, well, do you remember when we were planning? You know, you were just like, well, give her whatever she wants. You know what I'm saying? But for the couples that are just like, yeah, it's a woman's day. Some of them are still wanting to plan together. He understands that. And he's like, seriously, I can just go and marry her right now. So this whole wedding idea is really what she wants. And I'm willing to give it to her because she wants it. And he understands like, okay, I still love her. I can go marry her right now. It's mm -hmm. interesting. I want to ask you this question too. How do you feel about, or do you know that any of the couples you're uh, you're doing the wedding planning with, do they do they seek therapy like before marriage, or do they get like premarital counseling? Like, do you you know what I'm saying? Like, is that ever brought up into like the conversation as far as speaking with you? Yes, yeah, I have um, some couples that want to do the premarital counseling. Um, which is always a positive, right? Especially if they, I guess, even if you have been married or you have not, you still would like to do that because now you're coming together. Um, and I encourage it with my couples and ask them, especially if I know that they're Christians or there's a religion part of it, religion part piece in it, I'll ask them, have you guys considered doing premarital counseling? Um, 
that's just part of what I ask. And then there's some couples that are actually already doing it by the time that we actually meet. Um, and then some couples are like, no, we're, we're not going to do that. We're ready to go. <laughs> but those that do do it, I notice that when they go to their pastor and then they come back, they're able to say, hey, we went to our, you know, people to counseling. And he said that we ought to communicate a little bit better. So we want to communicate with you and let you know this is what we want to do. And I commend them for that because you have to be brave, right, to say, let's go to counseling. You know, let's really try to work on this relationship because we don't want surprises in the marriage because we can plan the day and it's just for one day. But then after that one day, you have to live together. You have to understand each other more. And then the fun is like, well, we had fun on the honeymoon, but now the wedding, we don't know how to act, interact with each other. Our little things come up that they don't know how to work with each other. Mm. So what what do you think is the percentage as far as uh, customers that you had that actually get the premarital counseling? What is like the percentage? Is it like? Uh, probably 2%. right two percent yeah yeah it's really low like i said um over 15 years i yeah not a whole lot because like i said so my cup my couples range and maybe this has a lot to do with it as well they're between the ages of like 25 and all the way up and when i say all the way up it can be like 54 You know, so depending on where they are in their life, some of them have either been married before or they have never been married. Those that have never been married are the ones that will ask about the premarital counseling. Those that have been married, they're like, oh, no, we've been together. We've been living together for so long. We have kids. So there's their mindset is a little bit different. But Mm. that's interesting. And I always wanted to ask that because I was like, you know. I know a lot of times people invest a lot of money into that big day and I, I, I get it, but then I wonder how much they actually willing to invest in their mental health and in the actual relationship. Cause like you say, it's, right. it's one day, but it's what happens after the honeymoon, right? That, that yeah. really counts. Um, yes. Well, uh, funny story and the subscribers in the brave arts community, they know for the most part, but my wife and I, funny story, because, you know, I remarried, obviously, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, my wife and I, when we married, there were only three three people at, at our wedding. It was, well, wow. outside of my wife and I. It was the pastor, a witness, and our photographer. Wow. Shout out to O.D., O.D. Harris. Oh, O.D., okay. Yeah. You know O.D. Yeah, right? O.D. was, uh, yeah, he was our photographer. Wow. And uh and yeah, and my wife and I, we we yeah, we married and she she dressed herself like it was crazy. She dressed herself, zipped herself up in the back and everything. I was like, I don't oh, know. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> um but you know, she was like, I don't want a big wedding. I don't want she was like, I just want this to be low key and we're gonna make it happen. So our marriage overall, I mean our wedding probably less than a thousand dollars, maybe. We hey. spent a lot of money on our you know uh, uh the uh what's the name the um the honeymoon the honeymoon but yeah, yeah wedding you might spend that much money yeah you know we we're, i'm seeing more of that as a trend too mm. you know the elopements you know more couples want to just do like a simple elopement and it's just really about them versus having you know all the family and having to hear everybody else's opinion so we do, we're getting slew of that, which is nice to see the elopement because they really understand the value. This is really about us. It's, yeah, we want family there, but yeah. So I really like elopements as well. It's easy too. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, I bet you, I was about to say, I'm pretty sure it can be easy on your behalf. Like, hey, all right, we can do this. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> we done. Right, right. <laughs> I try to make it more fun for them, you know, have like a little cake you know, that they can still celebrate and then they have the little toast as well. So you can still make it just like as a mini um, type wedding. And then sometimes they want to go to the park and a nice park with the waterfall or sometimes they just want to use like a small venue, but you can still make it as like a wedding. It's just not as big, meaning people wise yeah. and food wise. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, yep, that's how you do it. You and your wife. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. 
I was, and I was feeling that too because I was like, man, <laughs> no, got saving it. a lot of money. <laughs> yeah, I want to jump into this bonus round. Now, there's no right or wrong answer. It's it's Stephanie uncut, so I okay. have these two questions. Okay. <laughs> What is the biggest mistake you see women make in relationships? Ooh, biggest mistakes. Um, it could be ooh. personal experience. It can be people that you know, people that you talk to. It's there's no right or wrong answer. I think honestly, um, submission. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. Because I think um, when a woman has been independent for so long, it's, you know what I'm saying, living her own life, making her own decisions. And then you meet somebody, you get married, and then she doesn't know how to submit. You know what I'm saying? She doesn't know. And then we always think submission is like a negative word, but it's, it really isn't. You know what I'm saying? It's really giving honor and respect you know, to your husband, why would you not want to do that? Right. And so I think a lot of women, we don't know how to submit because it could be how we were raised. We never saw it in our family, or we just really don't even understand what the word really means. And then we get married and then we're just stuck because now he's looking at us like, I just want you to listen. I just want you to, you know, just let me lead without you trying to lead and wear the pants. So I say one, it would be submission. The other one is, um, uh, you have to throw these bonus questions. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, that's, well, the, the submission piece, I, I just want to bring this like kind of like full circle, the submission piece. I think a lot of men, I think a lot of men kind of, struggle with leadership right i believe mm -hmm. that a lot of women struggle with submission but i think a lot of men struggle with leadership mm -hmm. because a lot of men haven't been mentored or they don't have the the, the fathers yeah um, or even just being submitted to another man like whether if it's a pastor or or a your boss you know yeah anybody yeah. Uh, i think that can then can cause issues too but i do agree that especially in this day and age, because women, men and women marry older. Yes. Mm -hmm. you know? So like you said, when it comes to making your own money and all other stuff, you've been doing that for as long as you've been working. And yeah. you say you be 30. I, I forget what the numbers are. I think women are 26, 27. Don't quote me, but I can't. But anyway, men are like 27, 28. Anyway, people get married older. Yeah. You figure you've been making your money for 10, 15 years. And by the time you get married, he asks you to make yep. a sandwich. He's like, she's like, what? <laughs> Me? Exactly. <laughs> make your own sandwich. See, right. But see, the, the other problem is, too, because that independency, you know, she's so independent until she can't even allow a man in her life either because she's too independent. Like, I got this. You know what I'm saying? And really, you don't have anything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but we say as women, we got it. And it's like, well, what do we got? You know what I'm saying? And you know, goodness, well, that you would love to have a man in your life, one that is able to lead, you know, but if she doesn't see a leader in him, then he may not be the one for you, you know, because if a man can't lead, he may not be the one for you. Or maybe you just need to be a little bit more patient because more grace you know, we need to extend more grace in a relationship to understand we do we do not come perfect. Not one bit at all, you know, but if you extend that grace and understand somebody was praying for you before as well. You know, you just didn't, you know, come into this world and rise up and now you know how to do stuff like it takes trial and error. But do you love the person if you love him and if she loves you, then you work, you, you make it work. You figure out. This is what we have to do to make this relationship work. And so it's a lot of um, compromising, not settling, but compromising. So. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah, that's good, because especially I think for us, like 
black people, when we hear the word submission, we we think in slavery, we think in <laughs> the kente, we you know, right. it's just like <laughs> it's mm-hmm. tough. Yep, it is. So. It's a negative word and it shouldn't be a negative word because it's really a positive word. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we should be able to uh, submit ourselves, you know, like the Bible says, one to another, one right? To another. It should be be mute, mutual. Yeah. Uh, I think a lot of times guys, they kind of want to come in the, in the marriage of the relationship and they submit woman and she's like, submit to what? <laughs> <laughs> I I remember I met this guy. This was recently. Mm-hmm. And so he told me, he's like, I said, well, what do you, what do you want? What do you, I don't know. I don't remember. What did I ask him? What do you want in a relationship or what are you looking for? Something similar to that. And he was like, well, do you know how to submit? And I'm like, who are you? Number one, like who says that as the answer? I mean, eventually we'll get there, but just out of the blue. And you didn't even answer my question in the first place. So I just looked at him and I was just like, yeah, I know how to submit, but now I'm like turned off completely. Yeah. And he, so he just asked you, do you know how to submit? Yeah. Just out of, just, do you know how to submit? I'm like, who are you? <laughs> oh my God. That's gotta be tough. Oh yeah. I've heard. And I said that. I asked him that. I'm like, who are you? Let's get that down first. <laughs> oh my God. That, yeah, that's a, that's a show within itself, but we'll, we'll save that for another time. <laughs> Next question. From seeing your parents' relationship, what did it teach you about marriage? Oh, gosh. Oh. So, my mom and dad were married, I don't don't even remember how many years, but my vision on marriage was not good at all because they divorced. You know, and all I knew is I grew up in a home that... This is like going into another topic. <laughs> well, feel free have, to share with what you want. Okay. okay. I actually have a book that I'm writing that's actually going to be done on Saturday. And it's really about my life growing up in the home, cycles, you know, and not understanding about marriage and stuff. So to answer your question, um, it was rough in my household. You know, my mom and dad, he was a narcissist, very controlling, you know, and I didn't know that until I was older, but it affected me because looking at relationships and marriage, I didn't know what a healthy marriage looks like. And I didn't know what a healthy relationship looks like. And so I had to learn on my own with trial and error to realize like, uh, you really doing stuff wrong. And so, because I didn't have that example. And I think because I didn't have that example in my family, even looking at my father, you know, then I'm like, well, who's going to teach me things? Like, what am I supposed to know as a daughter? Can you teach me what not to look for, what to look for since you are my dad? You know what I'm saying? And so he wasn't a type of father like that. He did the best that he's able to do. And now as an adult, I understand that. And so I don't hold him to it I because there's no reason to. It's like I've forgiven him. We have a better relationship but it's still not that father and daughter type relationship. And so it affects me sometimes in relationships because I'm like, I don't know, I'm learning. You know, I don't know what to expect. So, but since I have been married before, I know what not to do. And I've gotten better with knowing what to look for and who is for me, is for me. Yeah, I respect that um, because... I was thinking about, or actually I am, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do a series on life after divorce. Ooh. So uh, I want to bring on any candidate who is willing to discuss and tell their story and know, let people know that you can recover after divorce. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. and you can, you can become even better yeah. after a divorce. Right. You know, so um uh, I guess I'm saying all that to say is if you willing to come back on and <laughs> talk about it. Yes, I'll be back on. I'll be honored. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Well, yeah. those who are watching and listening, Stephanie says she's going to come back. So if she yep. don't come back, inbox her, hit her up. Because I'm asking, <laughs> I'm going to tell her to give her information. And uh... Yes, I <laughs> promise I'll be on it. I'll be honored. Thank you. Okay, for sure. 
I just thought I'd put that out there. <laughs> Last question. Is it easier to love yourself or someone else? Ooh. Mm. I don't even know how to answer that one. I think a little bit different because I'm like, well, if you don't love yourself, how can you love somebody else? You know, because you've come first. You know, you have to learn how to take care of yourself in order for you to love somebody else. Because you got to you got to let that person love you. But if you don't know how to love, I don't know. That's a good question. Yeah. Well, what about in Stephanie's own life? Is it easy to love? What's the question again now? <laughs> Is it is it easier to love yourself or love someone else in Stephanie's personal life? So is it easier to love Stephanie or is Stephanie is it easier for Stephanie to love someone else? I think on for me, it's easy for me to love someone else because I already know who I am, you know, and so I'm able to love a person that comes into my life. I that's my problem probably. I love a lot. You know what I'm saying? I just give a lot, like. If you tell me what's wrong, I'm ready to fix it or we're ready to work on it. Let's do it together. You know, I'm always about let's do it together. Mm -hmm. You know, let's make this happen. So I'm able to love a person mm -hmm. a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I respect that. There's a lot of times when I ask this question, I just always like to ask because people will tell you what they think. But then I like to ask like personally, mm -hmm. you know, and make it a little more personal because yeah. um, I know I used to struggle big time with loving myself and yep. I realized, you know, that like you have to love yourself. You know? Yeah. Um, and there's no right or wrong answer. It just depends on where you at in life. Right. 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 It's easier when you love yourself than you can love someone else. You know what I'm saying? Because you understand who you are. If you don't know who you are, how can you love and how can they love you? You know, so you got to know who you are. I think, um, even with your your other show that you're going to come up with, um, the good thing about that is you have a period after the divorce where you have to take care of you now. You have to relearn yourself, right? What you like. Sometimes you lose yourself in a relationship, you know? And so if you don't know who you are, because now you're a new person, where before you got married, you were probably somebody else. And then when you got married, Everything that happened, chaos, whatever, good days, bad days. And then now you just lost yourself because you were too engulfed maybe in that marriage. And then now you get a divorce. So now it's discovery period again. Who am I? What do I like now? And how do I get this happiness back? Being alone, being by myself. And so you have to discover yourself. And I always go to, you have to, you have to know who God said that you are. That's the best way I can say it. What did God say? Who am I? And then go by what his word says, because he's not going to lie to me. And then begin to love myself again, begin to do those things, take care of me again mentally. Mental illness is big, you know? And so you got to take care of yourself mentally as well in order for me to be able to love someone else. If I don't love me, I'm going to destroy myself. And then I'm going to destroy you because you're trying to love me. And then you're going to be all messed up. Yep. Yep. Yeah, it's a, it's a domino effect, unfortunately. Yeah. 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 Can you talk to us about the book? Which book? Your latest book, The uh, Entrepreneur. Uh, entre is it Entrepreneur dec Decrees for Entrepreneurs? Yeah, so it's prayers. Okay. Here it is. Can you say it? Yes. Yeah, so it's Prayer and Decree Journal mm -hmm. for Entrepreneurs. Yes. This book, oh my gosh, this, so this is my first book. And let me tell you, I wrote this book because my apostle had told me, he said, Stephanie, it's time for you to write. And I was like, man, I was supposed to write like five years ago. And so I, the other book that's coming out this Saturday, that's going to be called Unmasking the Jezebel, the Counterfeit and the Narcissist. But that book is the one that God gave me five years ago to write. And so when he told me, he said, you need to write this book. I said, okay, I'm gonna write this book. And then I had to pray about it and I said, God, what do you want me to write about? And he was like, do a prayer journal for entrepreneurs. I'm like, okay. 
So this book, I enjoy it. It's a journal. So it allows you to be able to come up with, not come up with, but I have prayers that are in here that you can say daily over your business, over your mindset, you know, over your, your hands. I believe in your hands, everything that you touch that you shall prosper and everywhere that your foot lands, you will own it, right? You will, you're going to take that whole land. So I go through different prayers that you can say every single day to help you get you in the mindset ready as a business owner. And then once you have the business or the storefront prayers that you should be saying, um, walking around that building in that location and plan, you know, and saying, this is my location here. And anybody who puts in that application, they're denied it's mine. You know what I'm saying? So we got to take back the power that God has given us. And so sometimes as business owners, we don't include God in the business, but now this book teaches you how to include God in your business so that you can live out to your God ordained purpose. Mm, I love that. That's good. Yeah, because we definitely gonna need God to help us with our business and stuff like that. Like he knows the beginning from the end. So yes. It's important that, you know, we hold his hand in the process. And I'm pretty sure there's gonna be some challenging seasons, but that sounds amazing. Yeah. I'm going to make sure that I have that linked up in the description below so people can get it. So let everyone know where they can purchase the book at. So it's on Amazon. Mm -hmm. You just type it in. Mm -hmm. um, see, I forgot even my title. Prayers and Degree, degree Journal for Entrepreneurs. But yeah, it, it is on Amazon. You can get it in paperback or you can get it. Um, you can download it from Kindle as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Awesome. Well, yeah, I'm but I'm excited about that book. Um, and hopefully I get some good feedback because I, I don't mind it. You know, I always feel like I need to improve. And so, but yeah, I'm going to send you one too. For sure. I'll make sure I support that as well because, you know, Thank I'm you. Gonna get this thing off the ground. So yeah, I can use those prayers. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll have and that I linked up in the description and make sure that people can have access to it so they can purchase it online and also leave a review for Stephanie's book as well, because the more reviews, yes. the higher your book rank. So yes, definitely. Yes. So Brave Arts community, you heard it here. Make sure you go support Stephanie and also let everyone know how they can get in touch with you. So you can um, you can either email me or you can go to my website, mm -hmm. which is amorousweddingsandevents.com mm -hmm. or you can call me 480-650-0849. Mm -hmm. You can also email me at sdwhite77 at gmail.com. And then I'm on Facebook, of course. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And go like the page too. Please. Thank yes. you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I'll have all that information linked up in the bottom. So everyone who's maybe watching or even if you're listening to this via podcast, you'll have access to it in the description below. Stephanie, yeah. this has been a phenomenal show. Thank you so much for taking thank some time you. out of your day for us to get this done finally. Yes, I appreciate <laughs> it. Thank you. I'm so honored to be here. Thank you. For sure. No problem. Well, Brave Arts community, you heard it here. Make sure you go connect with Stephanie. Make sure you pick up the book. And if you are about to get married or if you're in the Arizona area or wherever, make sure you contact Stephanie because um, she does great work. Make sure you hit the subscribe button if you're watching this via YouTube. And if you are listening to this via podcast, make sure that you leave a rating and review on Apple so that way we know how we're doing and by doing so it put you in a drawing for a free Amazon gift card who doesn't like free stuff. And I think it's about that time for us to announce that winner. Somebody is the winner. We'll announce that. <laughs> but make sure you leave a rating and review on Apple Podcasts. We would appreciate that. This is Sean Heineman with special guest Stephanie White. Brave Arts community. You. Take care. Hey, thanks again for watching another segment of A Scary to Remarry. I have so much more amazing content and some phenomenal guests as well. People who've been through a divorce, people who remarried, people who desire to marry. So much great content. So make sure that you hit one of these videos. It's somewhere around here. But anyway, go watch another video.